For this tutorial, you will need your selected yarn. I'm using Cotton Aran and I've gone down to a three millimeter crochet hook. You will also need a key ring clasp, ideally with a D ring or at least if it has a flat edge like this one. So to begin, we want to create our slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook. Then you want to take your clasp and we're actually going to be working a double crochet around this clasp. So you want to hold it in your hand, in your non-working hand, and then we're going to insert our hook in this space on the clasp. And then we're going to grab the yarn and pull it through. We'll have two loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. And there we have our very first double crochet. We're going to work six double crochets in total into this clasp. So here's our next one. Remember I'm working in UK terms. In the US, this is known as a single crochet. So that's three, four, five. Don't worry about it slipping all over the place at this point, and then six. So we now have attached our yarn to the clasp. We're then going to turn our work and start row one. We're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we're going to do a back loop only double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Now, if I go into this stitch, this very first stitch, it looks like we have the two loops on the hook. We only want to work into that very back stitch or that very back loop. So we'll go into that loop, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. That's one. And then into the back loop of the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And then in the back loop of the next stitch, this is our third back loop only double crochet. Into the next, that's four. Into the next. That's five and into this very last one which is six. So we're left with these front loops here and we're actually going to be working them in the very last um, row of this keychain. So just bear that in mind. Now what we're going to do is turn our work. We're going to chain one and this row is what we're going to repeat for the whole of the keychain. So this chain one does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to go into this very first stitch with a slip stitch. So going into the stitch, into the whole stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on the hook again, and that's a slip stitch. We're then going to do a half treble into the next stitch, which is a half double crochet in the US. That's yarn over into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, we'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. And then we're going to repeat those two stitches. So we'll go into the next stitch with a slip stitch. Try not to make that slip stitch too tight because it might make it a bit more difficult to work into in the next row. And then we'll do a half treble crochet into the next stitch. Slip stitch and then half treble crochet into that very last stitch. So we are working with a much smaller hook and that is because we don't want any gaps in the work. We want it to be quite sturdy with it being a keychain. So there we are at the end of row two. We're actually going to repeat this again and for the rest of the work, as I say. So we're going to turn the work and chain one and then we'll repeat that. So slip stitch into that first stitch and a half treble into the next stitch. 
slip stitch, half treble, slip stitch, and half treble into that very last stitch. So that is row three. You're going to pause the video and work 45 rows. I would highly recommend that you take note of which row that you are on. However, if you do lose count, then all you have to do is just bear in mind that these ridges that you see are one row, but they will alternate on every row. So for example, this is one row, but then we also have a row in between and then this ridge is another row, and then we have a row in between. So we have our first row, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example. So that will help you out if you do lose track, but um, just make note on a piece of paper what row you are at, and meet me back at your 45th row. So once you finish your 45th row, you're going to turn your work, and then you're going to fold the short sides together. So this is the row where we had our unused loops from the first row. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook into the very first stitch on the working row. So insert our hook into there, and then insert our hook into the first unused loop from row one, and then pull through, and pull through. So we're just slip stitching it together. We'll go into that next stitch of the working row, into the next unwork stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through for a slip stitch. And we'll do this all the way across, working into each stitch, And then this very last stitch just here. And then once you've done, you can yarn over and pull through. You can snip off your yarn, which I have actually already done. And then you can pull out and pull tight. And then you just want to grab your darning needle and sew in those ends. So I'm just going to take this end and I would recommend that when you sew this one in, you pull the stitch this way and then you go in inside the work. And what that will do is when you pull it through, it will just pull down that stitch and just make it a little bit more secure and just a bit neater on that edge. And then you can obviously go back through and weave in your ends, catching different fibers. And I like to use the rule of three, so I'm just going to go back in again. Pull through and then snip off. And then you can do the same for this other end here. And if you like quick and easy makes, if you're looking for more, then I think you might also like this video right here.